this video, we're going to discuss how to care for the violin and the bow. Caring for the violin and the bow is pretty much just a question of maintenance. It's also a question of protection. Protection for your violin and your bow. I'll explain why. Well, one of the biggest causes of problems for violins is this. This is rosin. Rosin is a uh, compound. Uh, it's a mixture of various kinds of tree saps and that tree sap is melted at a very high temperature and then it is cooled and molded into a particular shape. Once that rosin has cooled you're able to use it on your bow and we'll talk about how to uh, put the rosin on the bow shortly in this video at the end. However, that rosin goes onto the bow hair and what happens is that all the little dust particles from the rosin uh, then get released when you play the violin. And those dust particles wind up all over the instrument and the bow itself. So the most common places for the rosin to wind up is here, below the strings. And if you play uh, <laughs> incorrectly, often on the fingerboard as well. Although even people who play correctly can get rosin on the fingerboard. So, there are different uh, philosophies about how to clean your violin best. One person told me you can use a soft cotton cloth, and I think that's absolutely correct. The uh, gentleman who sold me my violin said to me, the best material to use is Kleenex. So we're going to use some Kleenex and just clean the violin. Make sure to get underneath the fingerboard. Make sure to also clean under the strings. I can't do that right now on the video, but I'm sure you can do that. Make sure to get underneath the tailpiece. And one place we often neglect is underneath the chin wrist. So that's all there is for that. But we also need to clean the bow. You can get that tissue between the horse's hair and the stick of the bow and just gently wipe away all the rosin dust there. Now the other thing which uh, is very important and this is going to uh, cover not just putting the violin away but also when you take the violin out of the case. Well you need to be able to play with the right tension of the horse hair. So in order to do that Remember in, the, remember in that last video when we were uh, discussing the parts of the bow? Well, we have the screw down here. You need to tighten the screw enough so that the hair has a certain uh, tautness. And the way to do that, well, I don't know if you ever remember the old saying, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Well, we want to turn to the right. So hold your bow with your right hand. I know I'm doing it backwards because I'm a mirror image of you, but hold your bow with your right hand. And then what I'd like you to do Take your left hand and just tighten that screw. And keep on turning, that will be clockwise, until the hair is roughly about, uh, oh, I'd say, you could fit a pinky through uh, the uh, bow from uh, between the stick and the hair. I would say even less than a pinky, just the tip of your pinky is, is sufficient. And, uh, you know, we're always taught, don't touch the hair. And there's an element of truth to that because if we touch the hair with our fingers, you can actually uh, get oils from your hands on the horse hair, which will, uh, over time, keep the hair from working properly. The rosin just won't stick to it. Uh, it has something to do with the oils from our hands, which we can't see. That It's invisible oils. However, if you can put your pinky through so that just the nail of the pinky is touching the hair, I think you should be okay. So that's how we know how much to tighten the bow. Now, another thing to do with your rosin, once your bow is tight, is to put the rosin on the bow. Now, we have to know also how much rosin to put on before we do that. You need to have enough rosin so that the horse hair is white, because horse hair isn't really naturally white. I mean, yes, there are white horses, of course, but uh, that being said, uh, it's not really like a pure white kind of color, at least not the horse hair that I'm getting. <laughs> so, what I'd like you to do is hold your bow with your right hand, and we'll talk about how to hold the bow exactly later so you have maximum efficiency. But at the moment, this is a very basic description. 
uh, just so you know the mechanics of everything. So as you're holding the bow, take that left hand, hold your rosin, and then you can move the rosin up and down, making sure to get all parts of the bow, the bottom part, the middle part, and the top part. Now, of course, you can also move the bow back and forth against the rosin. Do whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, as I said, once you uh, know how to really hold the bow, it'll be much easier for you to, uh, to do this step. So that's how you uh, put rosin on the bow. Now, one word about rosin as well. Rosin allows the bow to have friction with the string. So what's happening is that while you're playing, there's microscopic little hairs uh, that are more or less perpendicular to the horsehair itself, and that's what's grabbing onto the string. But that rosin is allowing it to happen, like, you know, times a hundred. So, that's the reason for rosin, not just to make the hair look pretty. So, once everything is done and you've finished playing, and you're just about to put your violin back in the case, we need to loosen the bow. So, remember righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Turn counterclockwise, holding that bow in your right hand and turning with your left hand. And what's going to happen is you'll know you've gotten far enough once the hair touches the stick. Don't go any further than that, because what happens is that if you turn too much, the screw will fall out of the bow. And uh, although it's not a difficult uh, thing to put it back, uh, if you don't know how, it can seem rather daunting.